somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lift him higher. Amen. Did you really lift him high? Amen. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I, I wasn't looking around because I, when I'm here, I'm here to worship just it's between me and Jesus. Yeah. You know, uh, so I hope while you were lifting him, it was higher and it wasn't way down here. Amen. You know, because he deserves to be lifted That's up. Right. That's right. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. The psalmist said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen. To exalt that name means to lift it up. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, you can't do that quietly. <laughs> Come on. That's right. Uh, Come on. You can't do that. To, you've got to make some noise Woo, when you're right. exalted. Yes. Yeah. noise and you don't like loud things, you're only going to be uh, happy in heaven for about 30 minutes because Amen. it says it's going to be silent for about 30 minutes. So then after that, uh, there's going to be praise going on around the throne 24 hours, well, forever. Some of you are the quiet type, but, but I've seen you get loose before. Hallelujah. Mm, let the right thing happen or the wrong thing happen. Amen. And you let it all out. Amen. That nice, quiet, calm demeanor just goes yes. out the window. Amen. I, I, I'm all right with letting uh, uh, the Lord uh, uh, be praised. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 And speaking about noise, that's what I want to teach you about tonight. I want to teach you about useless noise. Yeah, Look at your on. neighbor and say useless noise. Useless noise. Useless noise. Uh, amen. We're going to talk about this is uh, this is the holiday season. The holiday that we celebrate is the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, if you don't want to say Christmas, that's fine because really uh, that just means that, that word Christ, uh, 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 Christ Mass, you know, that uh, uh, it's Jesus' birthday. Amen. 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 So you don't have to say Merry Christmas to me. You can just say Happy Birthday, Jesus. Amen. Yeah, Amen. we'll just make it, uh, it's all about Jesus. Amen. So we'll just say Jesus, Amen. Jesus, Jesus. Yes. So this is about Jesus' birthday. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're going to talk about the kind of gift that we need to give in this beautiful holiday season. This holiday, which is a holy day. Amen. And you know, these uh, uh, non-religious people that just want to say happy holidays, obviously they don't, they don't realize that holiday means a holy day. Amen. You know, a holy day has to do with a holy one. Amen. Amen. Which is God. Amen. It's so wacky. It's not funny. Amen. Amen. They're messed up, you know. Happy holiday. We we'll just call it a, a you know holidays. Well, go ahead. It's a holy day, uh, and there's only one that is holy. Uh, amen. And we know His name. What is His name? Jesus. Jesus. Uh, amen. You can, if you have your Bibles, I'm not going to read a, a, a verse in particular, uh, but you can go to First Corinthians chapter chapter 13, uh, and I'll be referring to this uh, uh, this chapter. Uh, throughout this study, amen, and I may have way too much tonight for for our midweek service, uh, uh, but as I was preparing this, I did realize that it was going to take more uh, than just one one setting uh, to get this out, amen, but then we're going to talk about useless noise, uh, amen, and, and something that is very, very valuable. We're going to talk about, look, look at your neighbor and say love. 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 We're going to talk about love tonight. And real love. Amen. Real love. Uh, Jesus said, they'll know you're my disciples by the love that you have one for another. Amen. And so we not only want to have the love for one another, but we also want to have the right kind of love as we reach out to this world. Amen. And we love, you know, and as you study 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it talks about some things that are very, very important. But it says more important than all those things is love. Amen. Love is the most important line. Bottom line, it's the most important uh, thing. The topic of love is very powerful, and I want us to understand that love is 
action. Love is doing something. Love is moving. Can you say amen? Amen. And it's not just words. Amen. And it's not just a, a song, but it is action. Love is action. Everyone say in Jesus' name. Anoint the lips of my pastor. In Jesus' name. Anoint my ears to hear. Let this word fall upon good ground. And I believe it all. God bless you. And you may be seated. And then we've heard people say, you know, well, they say that they love me, but I really don't feel it and I really don't see it coming from that person. Have you ever heard someone say that? Or have you ever said that yourself? Well, so-and-so says that they love me, but I don't ever really see or feel that love. You know, people come into the church and, and sometimes people who walk into the church say, well, the people in that church say that they love and that they have love, but I really don't feel it and I've not felt it shown toward me. Folks, this has to be a place of love. That's right. Amen. Amen. Amen has to be love that is real yeah. and love that is in motion. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. amen. We want to make sure not only are we people who say that we love, but we show that we love and care for one another and our fellow man. I don't want to just be somebody who says I love, but I want you to see it. I want you to feel it. Man. People know you can feel love. Amen. Amen. You can feel it when somebody is loving toward you. Amen. Amen. Now there are times when you don't feel like loving, but you still go through the motions right. and eventually something begins to happen. And when you go through the motions, it yeah. brings on the emotions. Amen. amen. And then you feel it. That's right. Right. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 It is imperative that we put our love in action. Yeah. Our love has to be working. Amen. Amen. And I'm talking about the love that comes from God. Paul addressed this issue in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now this was a rocking church. This was a church who had it going on, but they also had their problems. Do you realize that this church has problems? I'm not talking about the church in Corinth. I'm talking about Solid Rock. Do you know Solid Rock has problems? Amen. You know, we have people in here who have problems. That's right. uh, you know, I've got problems. Amen. Yeah. You know, you, I know you've got issues. Amen. We all have issues, don't we? Yeah. And, but we're still a part of the church. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Uh, so they had their problems. They were a holiness believing church, but they still had their problems. And one of the problems that they had was the lack of love. We can have a lot of problems, but one problem we don't need to have is the lack of love. We've got to have love running over. Can you say amen? Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I mean, they have, you, you know, we can have one uh, person talking about another and they have that there in this church. Uh, they can have people who have problems with other people. Maybe their standards weren't right or they didn't think they were living up to it like they should. And you'll have those things in the church uh, and that's all right. Uh, but, but more importantly than all of the junk, uh, we need to make sure that our heart is full of love. Right. Before I'm worried about anybody else, uh, I don't need to make sure that, that I'm I'm fitting into a T more than anything else. I need to make sure that I have love. That's right. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Because love takes care of a lot of things. That's right. Amen. And love is a lot of things. The scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians that love is patient. Can yeah. somebody say amen? Amen. And love is also kind. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So we don't need to be having problems where we talk about one another. We need love. Can you say amen? amen? We don't need to have problems where we have issues with one another. We just need to love each other. Amen. And we need to love everybody that comes into these doors. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. We don't need to worry about what somebody is struggling with out there. We just need to love them. Amen. And God will take care of that. Amen. And folks will say, well, pastor, don't you know so-and-so is doing this or doing that? and not doing this or doing that. All, I, all we need to do is love. Amen. And I know sometimes I get hot under the collar and I just want to let my mind be known. Uh -huh. 
But you know what? What I do a lot of times is that I, you might see that I'm aggravated in my face uh, and in my expressions, but I'm not letting it come out. Yeah, just leave me alone. Give me some time to let it resonate inside of me. I don't need to talk about it right now. Anybody else like that? Yeah. I mean, when you're really upset about something, uh, and, and everybody's like, "Well, what's wrong? What's wrong?" I want to. No, no. Let's let's just sit back and let it resonate. Because I'm the type of person that if I let it settle for a while, it's not going to explode. Mm -hmm. But if you push my buttons right then and there, it's going to come out wrong, and I don't want it to come out wrong. That's right. I mean, give me a day or two, and you'll feel that love coming. Out because God is working on me, but if you push the buttons right then and there, amen, that love's not going to come out, and I want love. Can you say amen? amen. So when we're dealing with one another and, and people within the church, we need to deal with love. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise amen. amen. So more importantly, and we do need to have, we need to be living up to a T. I'm not saying that we need to be running footloose and fancy free. Amen. There are some guidelines that we need to live by as believers of this word. Amen. There are things that we need to say and do. But more importantly than that, when we're dealing with those things, we have to deal with it in, somebody say love. 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 Amen. We don't need to be running people off because we're grouchy. Amen. And, and, and you know, nobody has an assigned seat in here. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise so if Lord. anyone ever sits in your normal seat, don't get upset about it. Just let it happen. <laughs> Amen. And find you a new place to sit. You know, I, I would like it if every time you came to church you found a different place to sit. I mean, it'd be alright with me. But, but we get in a comfort zone. I know we're all that way. Amen. Uh, uh, but we want to have love. Uh, you don't get mad if somebody takes your parking spot. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. But this was an issue with the church in, in Corinth. They had a problem with love. They did a lot of things right. They were really good about a lot of things. Uh, they had spiritual gifts uh, in that church. Uh, but you know, even more importantly than spiritual gifts, uh, we need to have love. Amen. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have spiritual gifts, uh, uh, but but the Scripture tells us those things are gonna they're gonna pass. Uh, but love is something that's going to last forever. Amen. It's always going to be around. Uh, can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise Amen. The Lord. So First Corinthians uh, uh, chapter thirteen says, uh, uh, and as you find that uh, uh, in, in that Scripture, if do you have, does everybody have it right now? Amen. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not, and in the King James Version, it says charity, but it is translated from a word that means love. Amen. I'm going to read it out of the, the NLV. It says, I may be able to speak the languages of men and even of angels, but if I have no love, my speech is no more than a noisy gong or a clanging bell. In other words, the King James Version says, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. In other words, I am just useless noise. If I don't have love, then I'm just useless noise. Yeah. And that's what the this church is. Yes. If we don't have love, we're just useless noise. Mm -hmm. All the praise and all the worship and everything, the preaching and teaching yeah. that goes on here is useless right. if we don't have love. That's right. Amen. 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 Somebody say amen. 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 I may have the gift of inspired preaching. I may have all the knowledge and understand all secrets. I may have all the faith needed to move mountains. But if I have no love, I am nothing. I may give everything, uh, every way, everything that I have, and even give up my body to be burned. But if I have no love, this does me no good. Amen. And without love, I am useless. That's right. All that we do and say is just useless noise. If you don't have love. Amen. Bottom line. Paul doesn't cut any corners. He doesn't sugarcoat it. He's telling the Corinthian church who had the Holy Ghost, they need to get it together. They had the Spirit of God. They had the gifts operating in the church. But he told them, you've got to get your act together. You need love. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you need love. Need love. Amen. Love is needed or we don't have a church. If we don't have love here, we don't have a church. That's right. We need love. Right. And then love Amen. is needed or you don't have a family. Amen. You're not in a relationship with somebody if you don't have love. Right. You, you, if, if, you're, if you're married to someone, if you don't have love, that's not a right relationship. You have to have love. Amen. 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 It's true. 
That, that's just the way that it is. I mean, love is needed. Love is connected or you just don't have the power to connect. I mean, Paul was dealing with some specifics here concerning the church. And you've got to understand that the epistles uh, were written uh, similar to the way that we preach a message. Paul dealt with issues that were particular to their situation. Amen. Do you know when we preach and teach from this pulpit, we are dealing with uh, specific situations, specifics in each and every one of our lives. Amen. And we need someone to help us. That's why we come here. Aren't you thankful that you have a pastor? Amen. Aren't you thankful that you have preachers and teachers to help lead you along the way? That's right. Amen. Amen. And, and, and you know that when we do this, we do it in love. Amen. We're not beating anybody upside the head. Can you say amen? Because in this day and time, nobody's going to put up with that. Amen. We're here to lead people in love. Amen. So Paul was saying, you know, you've got all this stuff going on. And he said, you know, you may be able to speak in tongues. You may have a position in the church. People may like to hear you preach and teach. You may be good at all that you do. But if you don't have love, you know, you musicians, you've got it together. Your music sounds wonderful most of the time. And, 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 and we have such a, a great move in here when the music is right. But if you don't have love in your heart, so all this music is just noise. That's Amen. right. Don't mean nothing. It doesn't mean a thing. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter how good your teaching is. It doesn't matter how, how good of a preacher I may be or how much people like my preaching. If I don't have God's love in me and my love is not felt by you, Amen. and it's not given to you and to my family, then I'm wasting my time. Amen. Amen. And it's useless. Amen. You may be, you may sing in the choir. You may have a degree. You may obey all the standards. You may have a Sunday school class. You may sit on the right side of the church. Uh, but if you don't have love, you're nothing but dust. Amen. <coughs> Amen. I give my tithes offerings. I always uh, go to all the fellowship meetings. I'm involved in all the fundraisers and I'm willing to do whatever I can for the church. Uh, but no love basically hurts the church uh, more than it helps. Uh -huh. You can be the biggest giver in the church and if you don't have love you're really not helping the church. Amen. Amen. I may be the best preacher in town uh, uh, but I want you to know if I don't have love then I'm not helping this church. And I want to help the church. Look at your neighbor and say, I want to help the church. Look at your other neighbor and say, I want to help you. Amen. Love is patient. Verse 4 says, love is patient. The King James Version says, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. In other words, it's not jealous or it's not conceited or proud. Love is not conceited. Love is not proud. Love is not envious of what somebody else has. Love is not ill-mannered. Can somebody say amen? amen? It's not selfish. Love is not irritable. So if you're an irritable person, guess what you need more of? Love. And I know we all have our ir irritable moments. We all do. I mean, there, we all have moments of where we really, or days, maybe even weeks at a time, we need to lock ourselves in the closet and stay away from everyone. Amen. But hey, we need to remember we've got God inside amen. of us. And that love needs to be strong. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. And I want you to understand, when I preach and teach, I'm not pointing my finger at anyone. Amen. This preaching and teaching is for me. Amen. Because I know there are times when I'm an irritable person and I need a lot more love. And that's why I come to church every time the doors are open. Amen. And that's why I hang out with you folks as much as possible because you are loving people. And I want that love to rub off on me. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Love, amen, does not keep a record of wrongs. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want that kind of love. Yes. And I want you to have that kind of love. Amen. Love doesn't keep records of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love never gives up, and its faith, hope, and patience never fail. Uh, now, we need to understand that this is powerful stuff, Amen. and we need to apply it to our life, because we need this kind of love operating in our homes, Amen. at school, Amen. 
at work, yeah. Amen. Amen. and in the church. Amen. Really, in the church, we need this real love inside of us. Uh, verse 8 says, love is eternal. There are inspired messages, but they are temporary. There are gifts of speaking in, 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 in unknown tongues, uh, but they will cease. Uh, there is knowledge, but it will pass. Uh, for our gifts of knowledge and of inspired messages are only partial. But what is perfect comes, uh, but when what is perfect comes, uh, then what is partial will disappear. All of this we do in the church is not complete until we have love. Amen. The music isn't right until we have love. Amen. The preaching isn't right until we have love. Amen. Amen. Our homes are not right until we have love. Amen. I want love. I want this kind of love in my heart and in my in my mind and in my life. Amen. A love completed because through love God becomes known. When we love, guess who is magnified and guess who the world gets to know a lot more? God. Jesus, that's right. Amen. That's what happens. And that's why we need to love. Amen. All the time. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. This needs to be a love machine. <laughs> yeah! Man. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to be a love machine. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Through love, God can be touched and God can touch. Amen. We've got to have love. Verse 11 says, when I was a child, my speech, my feelings, and my thinking were all those of a child. Now that I'm a man, I have no more use for childish ways. What we see now is like a dim image in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. What I know now is only partial. Then it will become complete, as complete as God's knowledge of me. It only becomes complete. Amen. This word only becomes complete. Amen. When we possess possess love. God cannot be seen until we love. Amen. Men, mamas, daddies, God can't be seen in our homes. Amen. Until love comes amen. through. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Everything is incomplete until we put love into play because without love, no man can see God. All that we do, it's incomplete without love. All that we obey, it's incomplete. It's useless without love. And I hope you understand that we have to have love. Amen. All that we sacrifice, it's incomplete without love. It doesn't matter what you do. If you don't have the love of God inside of you, it is useless noise. Just useless noise. We've got to have love. And then verse 13 says, And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. Amen. But the greatest of these is charity. Amen. The translation that I'm reading from right here says, Meanwhile, these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And a lot of people say, Oh, I've got, he's got great faith. He's got great faith. And we put a lot of stock in faith. And we need to have faith. But even more than faith, we've got to have love. Someone say amen. Amen. First John four eight through twenty one says, "He that loveth not, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. If you don't love, guess what? You don't know God." Amen. amen. Oh yes, I do. I've been a Christian my whole life. You know, I'm a God fearing man. I'm a God fearing woman. But you are nasty and ugly, and nobody feels love off of you. Hey. You've got to love. Amen. If you don't love, if I don't love like I'm supposed to love, amen, in all of my relationships, then I don't have God. Amen. amen. Sorry. I'm not right. That's right. I'm not right if I don't have love. Amen. This, for, for God is love, is what verse 8 tells us. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Herein is love, that we love God, uh, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation uh, for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Look at your neighbor and say, I love you. I love you. Amen. So, hopefully... You love. I mean, because if you're not loving, you don't love God. Amen. 
You've got to love. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, guess what the Scripture says? God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. So you've got to be careful. Please don't ever say that you don't love somebody, because guess what? God's not in you. Amen. Amen. His love is perfected when we love everybody. Lottie, Dottie, everybody. Amen. And we got to love them all. Amen. And Paul was talking about a, a glass and, and, and seeing through a, a dim glass. You know, we've never seen God face to face, but if we love one another, we're looking at the attributes of God. Amen. If we love the world like we're supposed to love those who are lost and love our fellow man, guess what? They're going to see God. If we want the world to see Jesus, then we're going to have to love. The greatest gift that we can give this world is not a Thanksgiving basket. Uh, it, it's not a gift under a tree. It's not anything. It's not anything but love. The greatest thing that we can ever do for anybody out there is love them. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that tonight? Yes. You know, the world's going to see Jesus through our love. I mean, don't, don't get this wrong. You know, we do need to look right. We need to dress right. We need to be moral in all of our things and all of our doings. You know, everything that we do needs to be done according to the Word of God, but it all has to be done with love in our heart. You understand what I'm saying? We cannot do away with the love. We've got to have that love living inside of us. Yeah. Amen. And I ask you today, what is your countenance? You see, because we can see, you know, love. And I know sometimes we put on a facade and we, uh, we, we fake, but you can't fake love, honey. That's right. That's not one thing that you can fake. You might fake it for a little bit, but it isn't going to last long. That's right. Because the time's going to come when, when love is called upon to go into action. Amen. And when it doesn't go into action, everybody's going to know that you've been faking it. Yeah. So you can't fake love until you make it. Amen. Love has to be real. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Hereby know that we dwell in Him and He in us because He hath given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in Him and He in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love and He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in Him. Now this is not just a bunch of charismatic talk here. This is the Bible. Bible. Amen. Love is the ultimate goal. Amen. You know, yes, we want to get people baptized. We want to see people uh, repent of their sins, baptized in yeah. Jesus' name, and feel with the Holy Spirit. But they, we also have to do all of that in love. Amen. Amen. We have a goal of growing this church. Amen. We have a goal of growing this church. Amen. We have a goal of expanding this church. Amen. Amen. But, but even above that, we've got to have love. That's right. That's right. Real love. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. Herein our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as He is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Everybody say there's no fear in love. There's no fear in love. We don't have to be afraid of anything. But perfect love casteth out fear. It gets rid of fear. If we have perfect love, we don't have to be afraid of anything. Amen. We don't have to be afraid to step out in faith. We don't have to be afraid of the kind of people who come into this church. Why? Because we have perfect love and the love of God living inside of us and manifesting itself in this church. Amen. Amen. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love Him because He first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. So if you say you hate somebody and you love God, then guess what? You don't love God. Amen. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. You know, I know even in a church this size, uh, you know, normally on a Sunday morning, we, you know, we're, we're pressing, we're starting to fill this place up, so we have a, a good number here. So I know even in a church, when we have about a hundred here on Sunday morning, even in a group that size, there may be one or two people that you're not, you know, they're not my favorite person. Hopefully I don't fall into that category. Amen. But you know, 
But you know what? We gotta have love. Amen. That's right. And we gotta set those things aside. That's right. That's right. You know what? Hey, so what? You know what? Make him your favorite person. Right. <laughs> but you know what? I, I wanna I wanna keep my, you know, I don't wanna uh, get rid of you. Amen. That's what needs to happen. We need to get rid of me. Right. Amen. And let real love take over. Can you say amen? amen. amen. Well, you know, I wouldn't hang out with that person outside of the church. Well, you want to know what? You need to plan a, a play date with that person <laughs> and hang out with them outside of the church. Amen. Because we got to get love. You see, love's not going to happen. Love is action. Amen. You see, you're just sitting over there saying that you love. Yes. Mm. We need to make it happen. Can amen. you say amen? Amen. 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 God, this is His commandment. To, amen. And this commandment have we from, have that have we from Him that He who loveth God loveth His brother also. Amen. Wow. Amen. Paul said and Jesus said, "Love is indeed in the church is needed in the church, or we're nothing but a bunch of banging and a bunch of useless noise." Amen. We've got to have love. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 We all need love. Amen. And all we need is love. Amen. And so as we read through First Corinthians chapter thirteen, they weren't too far from the truth. Amen. We've got to let love flow through us every time we come together. And it's something that we have to give. Yeah. It's action. Yeah. Okay, so we have to make it happen. Okay? We can't just say it. When we come here, we have to give it. We have to give love. You know, it's alright to tell one another that we love one another. Because we do. And I do say it a lot. And I know some people, sometimes people, especially when they first come into the church, they're a little uncomfortable with that. Why does that guy tell me he loves me? But I, I do love you. Amen. It's a lo I love everybody in here. Amen. I don't care how big you are, how small you are. I don't care how pretty you are, how ugly you are. I love you. Amen. 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 Because God is love. Amen. Amen. And you're only going to see God's face through love. That's right. I want to see more of God. Amen. Amen. I want people to see more of God in me. And the only way they're going to see that is if I love. Amen. But if I don't love, guess what? They're That's seeing right. just the opposite. Amen. Amen. You see, the problem with the church in Corinth is they were starting to see uh, that, that all the gifts uh, in the church were, were far more important than that. And those things happen even nowadays. That's you know, right. people think, well, you know, we've got the gift of tongues, we've got this happening, we've got knowledge, we've got wisdom, we've got evangelists, we've got prophets, we've got all these things uh, going on in the church, the teachers, uh, and, and we've got it all together. But, you know, there's a problem if we're missing love. So Paul got on to them. He said, this is what your problem is. Uh, you know, they were seeing these signs, uh, that the signs that they had were far more spiritual. You know, if we want to be a spiritual church, we've got to love more. That's right. I don't care how many times uh, people fall out in the Spirit. How many times uh, uh, people uh, you know, speak in tongues and we have uh, interpretation and things like that happen here. If we don't have love, those things are not more important than love. That's right. I want you to understand that love is more important than those things. That's right. Because those things are going to pass away. Yes. Mm -hmm. But love is going to be here. You see, the gifts are not marks of spirituality. The sign of spirituality in a church is the love that's in a church. That's right. Well, I was a spiritual church. I really felt something. You know, there's something in there. Well, hey, what we need to feel in here is not goosebumps. What we need to feel is love. Amen. We do need to have the spirit moving. I'm not saying it, but it's a balance. We've got to have the Spirit. I want to feel the Spirit. I want to feel the heebie-jeebies sometimes when I walk in here. Right. I am standing on holy ground. That's right. Amen. But at, at the same time, I want to feel love. Amen. Amen. There are times as pastor that I may have to, you know, talk to. Is it all right if I ever talk to you all? Yes. And, and tell you, you know, hey, you need to maybe straighten up a little bit. Maybe Amen. pull your bootstraps up a little bit more uh, and, and run this race a, a little bit faster. Yes. You know, or maybe maybe you need to tighten up. Is it all right if I ever come and tell you you need to tighten up a little bit? Because yes. of, And it's because I'm worried yes. about you. You see, because as your pastor, and I want you to understand this, and if you don't understand it and you don't want it that way, well, you know, just come here and just sit and just, you know, do your thing. You know, but I want you to understand you're not going to make it to heaven. Amen. You know, I have 
a purpose here. You know, in the church, God places a pastor here to help lead and guide us, That's help right. us bring us along. And you know, anytime I talk to anyone, and all of you can testify to that, those of you that I've talked to before, you know, I do it in love. I don't ever care. I'm not walking tall. You know, I, I don't carry some big stick uh, to make things straight. Uh, amen. I do it in love. You know, because I learned a long time ago that you 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 get a whole lot more being sweet uh, than That's you do right. being mean. Yes. Right. You know, my my one of uh, uh, my matriarchs taught me. Uh, you know, you catch a whole lot more flies <laughs> with honey than you do lemon. Amen. So I try to have a whole, and I know we're not, you're not a fly, and we're not trying to catch flies here, but I want you to know we've got to have love if we want things to be right in the church of God. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 And so we don't want to go too far one way or the other. We want to balance in That's all right. of this. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. So if pastor comes to you and shares the love of God, I want you to receive it as I give it in love. Amen. Amen. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, so we want to make sure that we have the gifts of the Spirit. How many want the gifts of the Spirit in this church? I mean, I want God moving in this church, but I also want love here. You know, Paul said that even if God gives you the gift of tongues, if you don't have love, then you're nothing. Amen. Right. You may be a great theologian understands everything in the Bible. You can memorize scriptures and God gives you messages for the church and other people. But if you don't have love, you are nothing. Amen. Amen. You can give all your money to the poor. If you don't have love, you are nothing. You may be the best provider and, and that list is not exhaustive. It can go on and on. You may be the best breadwinner there is, but if you don't have love, you're nothing. That's right. You may be the most faithful person in this church, but if you don't have love, and I want you to know when I'm preaching, I'm not pointing my fingers at anyone. Mm -hmm. You know, this is all preventive maintenance. Yeah. It's not that we have a problem. You know, this is so that we don't have a problem. Yeah, Everybody know. say amen. 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 And I know sometimes people sit there, mm, I wonder who he's talking about. Mm, he's talking about, you know, no, it's not that way. This is preventive maintenance. Amen. So that we don't fall into a place. Because we've got to show love. Because if we don't show love, if we don't have love operating in this place, then we're nothing but just useless noise. Amen. You know, if we got up here to work, sing and worship tonight, we didn't have any musicians and all I did was bang on this. It wouldn't sound real good. But you want to know what? That's what this church is. If we don't have love. We've got to have love. Amen. Amen. In everything that we do, we've got to have love. But that love doesn't stop in here. That love has to make its way as you stand to your feet right now. That love has to make its way outside of this place right here. You know, you can love and we can all be mushy-gushy in here and just be sloppy with our love. But if we go out there and we're tight with it, then we're not doing any good. The love that we have in here has to make its way out there. Amen. And that love that we have in here, it's got, it has to be in our homes. We Amen. have to have this same love in our homes. Amen. Gotta have love. Real love. You see, we can give out of duty because it's expected of us. We can give to look good in front of everyone else, and that was done in the New Testament. It got a couple in trouble. Ananias and Sapphira. They just Amen. gave, you know, and then they lied about it, and they yeah. was doing it just to look good. You know, you know what happened to them? They dropped dead. Right. You know, see, they didn't have the right heart. You know, we can do a lot of things just to look good. But if we're not right in here, and it ain't right, and it isn't real, when it's called into action, and yeah. it doesn't come forth, guess what's going to happen? You're going to drop, you might not physically drop dead, but when that trumpet sounds, yeah. you're going to live an eternal death. Amen. And so we need to make sure that we are right. Amen. So what is love? Amen. Somebody say God is love. God is love. Amen. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or conceited or proud. And that love, you see, if we don't have love, we are useless. One is love to be right, and I want it to be real. Amen. And, and I want to be able to share that love with everybody who's in here. Amen. And share it in this world that I'm living in.